A. Bandy writes, In cleaning my studio, I found a ton of old paper I bought when it was being discontinued. I love the paper, and I would love to use it, but I don't want to make new pages saturated with old product. Glitter Girl, can you help A. Bandy find a new love for old papers? Of course I can. Let's have a look at a few older papers that haven't been on the market for a while and sometimes even the companies or the brands aren't around anymore and look for some current collections that can work together so that you can breathe some new life into your old stash and make you fall in love with its older papers all over again. So the original post asked specifically about the Love Elsie collection. So I've pulled out a few of those but then also some other collections that you might have in your stash. So I'm starting with this uh, Love Elsie paper which was from one of the later collections she did that was an exclusive to Hobby Lobby. Um, but they're very similar designs in all the different collections that she uh, created. So what I'm looking for is things that I can find in common with another collection. So I could always go with color. I have other things in my collection that have hot pink, that have aqua, that have green. Or I can look for motifs. There are definitely things I have in my collection that are current papers that have um, book text or music notes or notebook paper, for example. So I've created a few page kits using my older supplies with my newer supplies. And the very first thing I wanted to go to with the Love Elsie papers was the Amy Tan collection and I found some really great matches in both the original Amy Tangerine collection and the brand new sketchbook collection. So this is where I wanted to start with um, with this particular paper and this is a aqua graph paper that just has a little bit of a hand-drawn touch and some really subtle watercolor shading in the background. It also has a black and white print on the back and a cute little um, a strip with multicolored hearts that might be useful. So i start with those two and then to finish this uh, kit I've pulled all sorts of other bits and pieces. So I pulled this fuchsia grid which is from the original Amy Tangerine collection along with this green wood grain so that I could pull out these hot pink fuchsia and green tones here. Then I thought I would look for things that could be accents and embellishments. And I love this Viewmaster print from the Note to Self collection by Echo Park. And although I don't want to use the full sheet on this layout, I thought one or two of the little Viewmasters cut apart would be something that would really um, gel well with this style of this collection. I tend to think not only of things that I can match, like the idea of the colors or, or repeating the motifs, but also try and think sometimes about what if that collection were still around now what trends would it have moved on to and where the Elsie papers had lots of cameras and, and little motifs like that I think if the Love Elsie collection were still around today the hand-drawn Viewmasters might be something that we would see in that collection so I think there's potential there for using a few of those as accents then I pulled out some other embellishments I pulled out lettering um, in this nice pink that matches the medium pink in the pattern from Jelly Bean Soup. And I have to say, I bought one sheet of these originally. I bought the gray. And um, as soon as I started using it, I had to go back and order every other color because I really, really love this font. It works really well either as mixed, little, and, and big letters, or all uppercase, all lowercase. It's, it's a really nice size. It has plenty of numbers, so you can do plenty of dates without running out. Um, yeah, really, really liking those sets from um, from Jelly Bean. And if you've been somebody that really likes the mini market stickers from October Afternoon, pick up some of these because they're a, although they're not the tiles, they are about the same size, and so you can use them in the same sort of places. And the, um, so if you're looking for something that's a little bit of a change up from the mini markets, these are a good thing. They're called Alpha Beans. Okay, I also pulled a turquoise. Um, alphabet, a glittery one, and that's from the new Amy Tangerine sketchbook, and these are called, they're called Scene, and some washi tape. I picked out this pink one with white hearts, and this one, which is super cute, but very subtle, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it's a white tape with an aqua grid, so it matches this paper that I pulled to start with and then it has tiny little pink hearts and a little handwritten word that says love over and over and again. So I thought that might be cute. Um, 
some things from Bella Boulevard had a good match to the pink and the turquoise, and I thought the cloud was hand-drawn, so it was kind of similar to the LC papers. And then I pulled um, one of the tags that is from Amy Tangerine just for two peas. They're just all different stitched words in different colors. And this little tag is um, pink and turquoise with that same watercolor that's in the background. And that's from the die cut pack from the Amy Tangerine sketchbook. So I've gone from this one sheet of paper that was very specific and an older collection to a page kit that now looks very current and uses lots of different colors that I love um, and something that I'm really excited to create with. So I've pulled out a few other collections and I'll show you the, uh, the different kits I've come up with from there. Just taking a very, very quick look at a few more page kits. I started with this multicolored floral print from the Love Elsie papers, then added an aqua chevron from B Bella Boulevard and an orange grid from Amy Tangerine. Then I could add more accents from Bella Boulevard and American Crafts, and also this memorabilia pocket from the Smash collection, and um, possibly a set of letter stickers from Crate Paper, which has both the turquoise and a pink to add a very different color, or the yellow and orange from Bella Boulevard. Of art. Another paper collection that I really miss is the Narratives Collection by Creative Imagination. So I pulled this cream and orange floral and matched that with the Heidi Swap No Limits Collection, which includes a lot of orange and cream plus navy. So I put that with um, some craft cardstock and navy accents, some cream letter stickers from Jenny Bolin, some stamps from Studio Calico, and stickers from the Note to Self Collection by Echo Park. For this second narratives paper, I looked for aqua and green and navy, so I found that in the Lily B handmade collection, and then added some navy cardstock. This Bella Boulevard letter sticker sheet includes both navy and aqua, so I've got both pattern, uh, both color options there, and some embellishments from American Crafts that have aqua and green in the same card, and then this nice green polka dot uh, tape from Bella Boulevard. And a pattern paper company that we all miss and it's always coming up in discussion, that's Scenic Root. Their designs were always printed on cream-based colors, so that makes them a great combination with October Afternoon, and I was able to match these particular colors really well with the Sidewalks collection. From there, I added more letter stickers um, from October Afternoon and American Crafts, plus some labels from Crepe Paper and some little stickers from Jelly Bean Soup. And one final kit I've put together, and this is the one I'm going to create a layout with you today. So I've started with three pattern papers from the Elsie collection. So this uh, camera print called Click from the Zoe collection, which is black, white, and yellow on this side, and then a yellow notebook paper on the other. A uh, pink paper with little text bubbles that say happy over and over again. That's just a single-sided. That was from the Hobby Lobby collection as well. And then this kind of crazy patchwork print from Zoe, which has uh, stars and hearts and rainbows and cameras. And on the back is red with white polka dots. So I started with those three Love Elsie um, pattern papers. And I also had, I also have this um, sheet of the Zoe chipboard that went with this collection, which also has a little cameras and paintbrushes, all different sorts of things. So I started with those four items from older collections that are no longer available and then went to see what I could put with it that would be new and current and um, things that I'm using now. I'm going to go with gray cardstock which is something that I didn't use much when this paper was out and I don't even know that there were many companies offering much in the way of gray cardstock then but there are a lot of different colors available now. And then this great heart print from um, the Amy Tangerine sketchbook collection which has that gray watercolored background with multicolored hearts and what I'm looking for is the repetition of color and motif. That's how I'm picking papers that go from older collections with newer collections. So there are similar colors here. There are hot pinks and oranges, turquoises, those are all colors that are showing up here. There's a touch of black which is definitely showing up here. And there's a hand-drawn finish to this and lots of hearts. And I've got lots of hearts to this and this whole, the whole Love Elsie collection has a very hand-drawn look to it. So that's how I'm starting to um, find bits and pieces that will work well together. Now, something I wanted to try that will bridge the gap is a new product that's a new twist on an old product. And 
In the original Heidi Swap collection, when she was with another company, she had this product called Letter Tiles, and they, they looked like this and were available in a few different colors. And it, they were kind of based on the sort of stickers that you would get to put on your mailbox or do any other sort of labeling, those kind of stickers that you would get at the hardware store. And... Um, but they were available in a, a nice, in two different nice sizes, and they were very trendy, scrapbooky colors. Well, now she's come out with these in what she calls color magic, and it's letterbox alphabets. And on the sheet, they're going to look just white, and they're resist printed, so I can turn them any color I want with mist or paint or ink, anything like that that I can um, put over the top. And then when I uh, take a cloth over the top, the uh, the resist is going to come through and let the alphabet show through. So I'm going to use that with pink I'm planning um, with some chalkboard glimmer mist to pull out the pink from all these different collections. So um, give those a try and then I also wanted um, to pull out some yellow so I've used the Alpha Beans Jelly Bean Soup letters in the nice yellow shade. I pulled out the Amy Tangerine Brads, which have a, um, all sorts of different designs, but there's one that's gray with the little hearts, there's a gray chevron, there's some hot pink with, little, with writing on top, different fabric brads that could mix and match with all that. One of the die cut tags from um, the Amy Tangerine Sketchbook die cut pack. Some pink polka dot washi tape. And some yellow, um, this is the Doodlebug uh, Baker's Twine. And then a stamp set that I thought I might use, which is another Studio Calico Hero Art set. And it looks like this. It has a big Polaroid. It has a little Polaroid camera. It has another camera. It has some nice um, different sayings and a globe. So I thought I would give those a shot. So this is the set I'm going to use to make my layout today. One thing that comes up a bit when working with older papers is that um, before a few years ago, nearly all of the pattern papers that we would purchase would be the thinner paper rather than a thick heavy cardstock weight. So these papers are definitely a lot lighter than, um, than the newer ones in my collection. So I'm going to start by trimming just a little bit off this pattern paper and rounding the corners and um, adding that to the cardstock background just so that I'm not working um, on a full background that's the thinner paper so that I know everything will be sturdy enough in my album. Right, and then I can start adding paper on top. So I know I want to use quite a big section of this. I'm just going to cut um, just slightly under half the sheet. So now I have something to bring together, the old paper and the new paper. I've got that same tone, I've repeated the gray, I've got the black repeating. So now I'm onto um, something that I can work with without having to worry about any of the papers looking out of place. And to be honest, once you have a page done and it's in your album, no one is going to say anything about the, the age of your papers. No one's going to know, you know, in, in a few years from now, all of these papers will be um, older and will be on to new collections. So I wouldn't worry too much, but sometimes it's just a mental block we get into of um, specific collections that work, um, that we're not sure how they would work with, with the papers that we have currently. And I'll show you where I'm, I'm thinking things will go. I have just one photo printed at 5x5 five five for this particular layout. I know that I'm going to cut out some of the different boxes from this patchwork piece. So I've just cut one so that I have that um, to gauge the size. And then I have this really simple little index card that I'm going to use for my journaling. And what, um, what I've done is uh, taken just a plain index card and run it through my printer. If you go into the two-piece store, Elsie actually did, when she was designing in the scrapbook industry, she did 20 exclusive fonts that are just here at two-piece. So you can um, choose any of those and you can still download them and, and use them on your printer, on your silhouette, anything that you want to use. And there's all different um, choices. So I just thought that by including that little bit of her handwriting in the font would pull together the older collection with the newer collection, so I've just printed it on an index card. And um, there are all sorts of different ones, both alphabets and uh, dingbats, like little pictures, doodles and things like that, so um, it's worth a look in the font section. Now, um, what I want to do is build my journaling and some embellishment up in this top corner, but I want a darker border, um, definitely above and possibly below this um, this section here. So that's where I'm going to put the 
black and white camera print. And I'm going to start with a thicker border here and then maybe try a thin border at the bottom too. Went ahead and added the um, slightly thicker border of the black print to the top and a smaller one to the bottom, but decided I'd like to um, divide that up a bit more. So I'm going to use the washi tape to just go right across the middle. And I love that you can just use washi tape without any worry. So it, um, I don't ever have to worry about running out. I have nearly got to the end of one single roll of washi tape, which I've used on a gazillion layouts lately, but in general it's one of the only supplies that I can use without thinking, oh am I going to run out of that? I can just keep on sticking. So I tend to look for prints that I know I will use over and over again that will be really versatile. So um, that's why I don't worry about just, okay I'll cover up that join and then I'll probably come back in with the baker's twine as well and put that over the top. Go ahead and add that. So. I'm going to cut two lengths to go, oh. <laughs> there's one, and the second one. And then I'll just attach that with the tiny attacher, just a tiny little stapler. Someone was saying on the general scrapping board that um, they hadn't believed the hype behind the tiny attacher and they were just like, oh, I have a stapler and I was exactly the same. Um, I've just kept on using my normal office stapler for a really long time and then had a chance to use a tiny attacher when I was cropping with someone else and she had it on the table and I just borrowed it and then realized I had to come home and order one straight away. So, um, yeah, that seems to be a common, a common thread lately that uh, if you thought the tiny attacher was, was just another stapler. It is really useful. It doesn't jam and it's a nice little size. Definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, so that gives me a bit more detail to that border there. I know I'm going to put journaling here. I know I'm going to put embellishment up here. I think I'm going to cover up this little awkward spot here with this little die cut. I have the little camera that's going to go in here. But I want to get my lettering sorted out. And for that, I have that, um, this alphabet that I'm going to color in. So I need to figure out what letters I'm going to use. And I'm going to pull them off the sheet so that I can color them. To use the Color Magic Resist Letters, you'll want to choose, unless you want to turn the entire alphabet one color, you'll want to choose the stickers that you want to use and then put them on something that they will come back um, up off the page. So I'm just using a craft mat. You can use, um, in a pinch, I think you could probably use wax paper or something like that um, where it's not going to stick. And then take your mist, your paint, stamping ink, anything you want, and put it over the top. So I'm just, I'm going to start by spraying this. We'll see how that works. If I need to go back in with a brush, I can do that. Yep, spray, it's just fine. And I'll set this aside in just a second, and I'll probably put some paper scraps into this pink since I've just put so much mist on here. Um, but now what I want to do is if I pull these over here, just show you these two while that takes a second to dry and then you just want to take a cloth or a baby wipe or anything like that and then if you wipe over the top the numbers are going to come through. While the letter stickers are drying I just thought I would try out the stamps um, that I would pulled out the Studio Calico set with the little cameras and have a look at different ink colors that would match the Amy Tangerine and the Love Elsie collections and both the speckled egg and chewing gum colors so the pink and the turquoise in the Jenny Boland for Ranger inks are a good match and that was just me playing with how much pressure I needed on this stamp so what I decided I would do is go back to this idea of the index card I think this pol little Polaroid camera is really detailed so it's a lot easier to tell what it is if you stamp it in black rather than a color but I wanted to mix the color in two so what I'm going to do is stamp the camera in black and then I'm going to include the little snapshot word stamp from the Amy Tangerine sketchbook stamp set 
But what I don't want is, and if you can see this, I've been using this set a lot and I really like this little snapshot set with the little Polaroid at the end. But in this case, I don't want the Polaroid at the end. I just want the word. So I'm just going to cover that bit up um, when I ink it with a post-it note. So then I can pull the post-it note off. Just make sure this stamp's nice and clean because it's probably not. Um, then I can pull the post-it note off and still be able to see where I'm stamping. So just take the sticky part of the post-it note and cover up the part of the stamp that I don't want. And then I can ink this part. Except I just did that in the wrong color, but hey, I'll do that over on this one so you can then see that it works. So this is sort of the effect I'm going for that I'll get the word, but not the Polaroid. So I'll do it again, but in the right color, hey. I've added my title on the diagonal from the um, journaling and the embellishment that I know is going to go here across the photo to the other corner. And that's where I'm starting to build my title. And then I want to add embellishment here and to this empty space here. So I went back to the, um, the patchwork sheet and started cutting little boxes. And this is where um, there are some tricks to matching the new and the old collections. So you can find blocks that the new and the old, the colors work really well. So the pink, the black, the white, and the aqua are all in both patterns here. And here, all the colors of the little rainbow design are in this pattern. The purple isn't, so I could just cut out the rainbow, but I actually think the purple is complementary enough to work. But this is the one where I start to get into trouble. I want the idea of repeating the heart motif that pulls together the, pat the, old, the new pattern paper with the older pattern paper, but I don't want to introduce red into this layout. Sometimes pink and red work really, really well, but in this particular page, I don't think that the red is going to work. So what I've done is then gone to another square so that I've got the right sort of um, size and I'm going to cut the heart shape from the yellow to put over the top because that's a color that does repeat. So I'm just going to change this embellishment ever so slightly so that that heart shape will then be another color. And there are plenty of these um, hearts on the sheet so I can even just cut one out and use it as a template to trace and then cut the yellow to fit. To finish my page, I ended up adding the embellishments on a loose diagonal line, and that's a look I really like with single photo layouts, so much so that it's also a technique that I've shown in more detail in the first 4x6 photo love series. If you haven't um, watched that and you want to know more about scattering embellishments across the diagonal, it might be worth a look. So I've added my writing on that journaling card that I made with the font, and then I just started repeating some elements. So I brought the washi tape and the twine back up to this top corner. I filled in this diagonal line with a mix of the boxes cut from the LC pattern paper, that stamped index card that I made with the title, and, and then the Amy Tangerine fabric brads mixed in with the older chipboard pieces that were from that same LC collection with the um, paper. And um, pulled all of that together to just repeat it all along that line. And I'm going to call that finished. So I'd love to see you put your older papers to work this week and mix them up with something new so you can fall in love with them all over again. I look forward to seeing them in the gallery. And by the way, all those other page kits that I put together at the beginning, I'll be posting those over the coming weekend. So I hope you'll stop in and have a look. Thanks. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.